Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sonam Putra. With me as always is Vivek Iyer. Hey Vivek, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, you know, there has been a lot of volatility that we saw in the middle of the day. But for now, uh, the Nifty is managing those gains of 52 points, is above the 22,400 mark, very close to the 22,500 mark and at the day's high as well. Uh, we have the Bank Nifty, which is doing well uh, too. And that is an outperformer in a market like today, despite the fall that we've seen in that big stock quote at Mahindra Bank. And it is supported by the good earnings that came in from Axis Bank and some of the other names as well. Midcaps, let's let's talk about that because that is also doing well in today's trading session. 125 points higher and the small cap index also is uh, seeing gains of 7 tenths of a percent and mid cap index also has surged to the day's high. You're absolutely right. Uh, and very surprisingly, you know, anyone coming into trade today morning yeah. would have imagined <laughs> that the Nifty Bank would be the one that would have seen the most selling. But what's actually aided, you know, the kind of recovery that you've seen, like you mentioned, Access Bank, the PSU banks today are doing quite well. So names like Access Bank or SBI from the PSU basket, that one has actually come ahead and helped the Nifty Bank recover quite significantly. But right now, let's focus on the mid-cap stocks. And Hormaz is here with us, you know, in our special segment, Mid-Cap Moors, where you'll highlight the top stocks that are moving from the mid-cap space. A bit of consolidation going on as of now, but all eyes will be on the final 90 minutes of trade when the expiry takes place. Well, you start off with the gainers in the broader markets. The mid-cap index is recovering from the lowest point of the day. But Bharat Forge is the top gainer on the mid-cap index as of now. Some positive brokerage commentary coming in there. 7.5% higher there for Bharat Forge. SJVN, PB Fintech, Delivery and GMR Airports also doing well in today's trading session. Some other names, a specific sector that's doing well today is the shipbuilders. And they are continuing to extend their gain that they have seen all through this week. All of them, Masgaon Dog, Cochin Shipyard, Garden Reach, trading with gains of anywhere between 35 to 5%. Slightly off the highest point of the day, but still continuing to trade with healthy gains. Some earnings impact that you would see in a lot of stocks that reported results after market hours yesterday and today as well. Mass Financial up 6% off the highs of the day, but still trading with healthy gains. But Dalmia, Bharat, Indian Hotels and Macrotech not having a very good day, seeing losses of anywhere between 4 to 7%. Some volume buzzers will come up on your screen now and those stocks are trading with gains. Hitachi Energy now 12% higher on very strong volumes as is Jupiter Wagons now is almost up 10%. Godfrey Phillips and MCX recovering almost everything that it lost in yesterday's trading session and that too with extremely heavy volumes. And lastly, some underperformers that will come up on your screen in, for that are for today's trading session. Spark, yet another lower circuit. But there was a brief period when the circuit had opened and now the stock has fallen back into circuit. JK Cement, Thermax and Astra DM are some of the underperformers in Today's trading session. Back to you. Okay, all right. That's a long list, but of course the market is such that you keep getting uh, those names and movers on either side. Thank you so much, Harmas, for joining us as always and giving us that list. Let's quickly take a look at more stocks which are on our radar today. Uh, Harmas did speak about a lot of them, be it Jupiter wagons, but Bharat Forge is one stock that you should look at, and that stock is up around seven and a half percent. And of course, in a bit, we'll have a conversation with uh, the management of LTI Mine Tree as well, and that is in focus on the back of a week third quarter with revenue and margin, both of them coming in lower than estimates. Margins decline for the third consecutive quarter and uh, we spoke. We will be in touch with the management in just a bit. Let's quickly take a look at the stock as well because in a market like this, LTI Mine Tree is a stock which is lower in trade, 2.3% and the brokerages indicate that it is an expensive stock in the nifty pack as well. Uh, Nachiket Deshpande, the whole time director and CEO of the company, join us now to discuss further. Uh, Nachiket, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. You know, you've spoken about growth returning in quarter one, that Q4 was a one-off. But the question is on the extent of growth revival given the stress in discretionary spending. Can FY25 be better than FY24 in that case? So, as we said, uh, I think uh, the Q4 related impact was one-off. And uh, based on the, uh, the deals that I've already signed and ramped up, uh, over the last two quarters, uh, we will uh, see a growth in our services revenue as we uh, go into Q1, and we're confident of that uh, returning in Q1. Uh, the macroeconomic environment, though, uh, continues to remain as it was. Uh, most of the inflationary pressures as well as geopolitical challenges have not uh, uh, improved in any sense around the world. Uh, so when the discretionary returns is still very, very difficult to anticipate for anyone. And hence, uh, you know, commenting on the overall FY25 
uh, numbers has been difficult. But since the momentum as we go into Q1 uh, would be uh, better and it will be on our positive side, we believe that our execution in FY25 would be better than FY24. But uh, to the extent of the full year uh, revenue trajectory, very difficult to predict given the, the macro uncertainties are still largely unresolved. Uh, good afternoon, Nachiket. So you're saying execution will be better in FY24, but still you don't have the confidence at the current point of time to say that FY25 will be better than FY24. Yes, we will. So that definitely would be the case. Uh, it's just that you asked the question on to the extent how, how much better will it be. It's very difficult to predict given the uh, external circumstances. Uh, you know, I, I am just getting into internals now. You had also highlighted during quarter three results that quarter four will be similar to quarter three, which is around 0.7%. Yet growth has come in lower at 1.3%. So it's a miss of 2% versus estimates. What explains that? So for our Q3 to Q4, I think uh, uh, DC called it out in the earnings script as well yesterday. Uh, there were, you know, one uh, in Q3, we had a much higher pass through than we normally do, and we had called that out as well. So absence of that in Q4 also had an impact. Uh, second, uh, of course, the furlough return, uh, which was gradual in nature through the quarter, and hence you know uh, the full benefit did not come back in Q4 um, as expected. Uh, there were this, the third part was the you know the uh, the two cancellation in BFSI that we talked about. Uh, that that was definitely. Uh, unknown and, and uh, a surprise element that developed during the quarter. And we also had some delays in ramp up. I think Sudhir talked about it in yesterday in earnings call as well, that few of the deals ramped up a little slower than what was uh, originally anticipated. All of them are fully ramped up now, but in Q4 it had an impact in terms of the revenue conversion into RPNL. So those were the four reasons for that 2% gap between uh, expectations. That's good. So right now, will you be focusing on growth over margins? And what is the recovery or what is the guidance that you're giving as far as margin recovery is concerned? So I think uh, when we said that it's not about uh, growth versus margin, but our focus has been and will be on profitable growth. Uh, the margin program that we had started and the certain uh, investment decisions that were linked to that, those are the ones where we pushed it out by a few quarters because we believe that uh, as the market uh, conditions, as when the market conditions improve, we want to be ready to capture that growth. And we wouldn't want to uh, compromise on our ability to capture that growth. And hence we said, okay, we'll postpone the margin improvement program by a few quarters. But I think our focus on margin remains, our medium term as well as our long term goal in terms of the range in which we want to operate, we will continue to uh, work towards that. Uh, and uh, I think both the companies uh, uh, before merger as well as the combined company, we continue to remain focused on the profitable growth agenda. Okay, let's uh, talk about long-term targets. The target of revenue synergies of $1 billion and cost synergies, which will drive 200 basis points margin expansion to 19 to 20% by FY27. Are you on track to achieve that? So as far as the revenue synergies are concerned, I think uh, we've already seen a fair bit of uh, uh, success in this uh, cross-sell and upsell initiatives that we talked about. Uh, and we've, I think we called out a, a number of deals that we uh, closed uh, even in this quarter, which were representative of that cross-sell upsell potential. Uh, I think the, the, uh, the key piece for us is to now scale up that program and to be able to roll it out to you know, at least uh, the Focus 100, as we call it, uh, within the organization. And that's what our focus in FY25 would be, is to uh, scale up this cross-sell upsell program to our uh, Focus 100 account base. And that, in a way, will help us uh, work towards that $1 billion uh, synergy revenue mark. So I don't think we have any doubts on our hypothesis for that $1 billion uh, revenue synergies, and we are on track now to uh, uh, execute to that uh, better in FI25 as we have now also learned and uh, fine-tuned our program uh, based on the experiences we had in FI24. 
the margin expansion program of 200 basis point i think we continue to uh, it continues to be our focus it continues to be the target uh, that we want to go after um, whether if i 27 is uh, is it possible or not i think it's a little difficult to say today uh, we'll continue to work on it i think as our fy uh, 24 plans got pushed out by quarter we'll try to catch up as much as we can uh, over the next two years but i think as it develops we'll probably be able to in a better position to say if there needs to be any correction or not but at, at least at this point in time we continue to work towards the same target uh, one worry that analysts have, uh, and you know, it's fructified in Q4, where there have been a couple of deal cancellations. So Q1 and rest of FI25, uh, are you worried about deal cancellations continuing that we saw in the quarter gone by? No, those were uh, uh, very one-off, focused on specific uh, uh, programs, uh, and it was uh, more in terms of the uh, you know the market uh, situations that result into those customers reprioritizing their spend. But we don't expect any such uh, um, uh, situations uh, going forward, at least based on the on the current deals, we, we don't anticipate any of those. Okay, uh, so can you give us a sense, uh, because top 40 clients, we've discussed that as well, with some signs of insourcing. What is the loss, if you can quantify that, in terms of revenue due to this? Uh, we haven't uh, really quantified that. I think, uh, as we said uh, in our uh, earnings call also, what we saw is that on one hand, uh, certain accounts within our top 40 uh, saw a decline in due to insourcing and various other reasons as well, including discretionary cutbacks and so on and so forth. But we also saw the other service lines or our cross-sell, upsell, uh, stepping up to compensate for uh, that revenue. So actually, if you look as you look at in a full year basis, our uh, top 40 accounts also grew slightly ahead of our company average. So that is so from that perspective, I think you know there is a sort of balancing act. We haven't really quantified uh, a loss due to insourcing per se as a single uh, reason. Well, the next question that we have is on headcount or on hiring. Headcount was down almost 2,900 in FY24. What is the outlook on hiring going forward? So I think uh, uh, in the post the merger, we had actually called this out that as combined organization, as we come together and as the systems get consolidated, we have a better visibility of the combined bench. We will focus on efficiently utilizing that bench and hence, uh, you know, our headcount, overall headcount, net headcount uh, uh, would be moderated and don't look at that as an indication of uh, uh, the uh, growth prospect. And we saw that played out over the last three to four quarters. I think post uh, pre-integration, uh, we were we used to operate at 80% utilization as a as individual companies plus minus. We are now operating at 86 to 87% utilization as a combined company. And so that a large part of that is coming through the headcount reduction has come through that efficiency of having better visibility of bench and better deployment of those bench in our programs. Uh, we, I also called out that I think 85 to 86 is our comfort zone uh, from a utilization perspective to balance our growth aspirations and the efficiency that we're looking at. So we probably are maybe about 100 basis point higher than our comfort level. And as we see the growth returning, uh, we, to, we had some drop in the utilization this quarter and we expect some more uh, drop in utilization as we get ready for capturing that growth. So we'll operate in that 85% to 86% uh, utilization range. And with that and the growth that we are seeing, I think uh, definitely we're seeing a better trajectory on our headcount growth as well as we go into FI25. Okay, all right, Mr. Deshpande, thank you so much for joining us with those insights. So that's the word coming in from LTI Mine Tree, the stock lower in trade today. We'll sip into a break now. When we return, we'll be joined by the management of Supreme Petrochem to discuss the quarter gone by. Stay tuned for that.
वेलकम बैक यू स्टिल ट्यून इन मिड कैप रेडार सुप्रीम पेट्रोकेम द स्टॉक इज ऑन आर रेडार इट इज हायर ड्यू टू द सिक्वेंशियल रिकवरी एंड स्ट्रॉग वॉल्यूम ग्रोथ द कंपनी सो एन एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर एंड क्वार्टर फोर वी हैव राकेश नयर द एग्जेक्टिव डायरेक्टर ऑफ द कंपनी ज्वाइनिंग एस नाउ टू डिस्कस द क्वार्टर गॉन बाय मिस्टर नयर गुड आफ्टरनून थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस वेल क्वार्टर फोर हैज सीन गुड वॉल्यूम ग्रोथ कमिंग इन इन बोथ एक्सपोर्ट एंड डोमेस्टिक मार्केट्स बिफोर आई टॉक टू यू अबाउट दैट इन द प्रेजेंटेशन यू हैव मैंशन दैट स्टार इन मोनोमर प्राइजेज दे हैव स्टार्ट इंक्रीजिंग फ्रॉम मार्च बिकॉज ऑफ the issues that we are seeing in west asia um i understand that's the raw material what does that mean in terms of your margins uh, and do you think this will continue in terms of higher prices see the raw material prices going up only leads to the uh, addition to the top line like last year also you see our volumes have gone up by 17.5% but our top line has is static because the raw material prices were lower as compared to the previous year so these prices going on eventually will get passed on to the customers our margins don't get affected yes but if the prices become too high of the raw material and at the at the end the finished product then uh, the the there could be a dampening effect on the demand at a later stage hmm. understood that sir so you're saying that uh, price moves typically are passed on to the end customer and uh, yes. you know unless there is a sharp spike in prices uh, there isn't really too much of an impact as far as margins are concerned uh, let's True. talk about volumes you said that volumes have seen quite a bit of a sharp surge in the quarter gone by and this is uh, what we understand is largely led by export volumes so is this sustainable number one in fy25 especially q1 and are there any worries from the red sea issues that are currently being faced which sectors are the ones that are seeing higher demand from the export markets see as far as the volumes are concerned in this quarter our uh, exports are not that high because we were catering to the uh, domestic sector and generally the months of the first qu- last quarter of the year is always good in the domestic market because of the appliances demand coming up when they are stocking it for the summer season and uh, the the lean month is the third quarter wherein our exports were higher but overall in the year our exports are up and uh, we we if we look at it the annual increase in the exports is almost 82% and coming forward to the going forward to the first quarter of the uh, fy25 we see that we would be doing better than the uh, uh, quarter gone by okay so you are expecting better growth in export markets considering this and the demand that we are seeing right now what kind of volumes are you looking at in fy25 in fy24 you were doing volumes you did volumes of 325000 tons per annum which is yeah. highest that you've seen in 5 years what is the number so, looking like will you continue that we would be crossing 350000 tons you said 50 right yeah that's right okay okay all right Okay, uh, you know we also want to understand about the mass ABS project. Uh, the first line of of the project with almost seventy thousand MTA capacity uh, yes. was likely commissioned in Q four FY twenty five. What is the yes. initial capacity utilization? Uh, how do you expect to ramp it up over the course of FY twenty five and help us with numbers that it can contribute to the PNL over the course of FY twenty five and beyond? Seedle had almost close to 900 to 1000 crores to the top line will have an asset turnover of around 2 and uh, the margins would be better than our uh, polystyrene business which is there right now so we expect that the margins the operating margin should be better than uh, 10% uh, as for the current prices are concerned and uh, the as far as the ramping of the capacity is concerned it is true that it will be the first time that the mass abs will be introduced into the indian market it will take us some time it will be maybe by the fy26 some quantities will get sold some part of the capacity utilization will happen but by uh, fy27 we expect that we would be doing 100% of the mass abs Okay, by FY twenty seven hundred percent capacity utilization. Are uh, you are actually on a capex free, uh, Mr. Nayar? You also are enhancing compounds in master batches and EPS capacities to cater to additional demand. What is this additional demand that we are talking about? Um, a, uh, by when will you be able to commission that? Can you give us a sense around this particular expansion? See, this capacity would be online again by the end of this financial year. and the demand is coming from the various sectors from the 
piping, from the films, from the uh, appliances sector. So this is to cater to that and also from the uh, EV battery side. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, sir. So, you know, the other thing that we are noticing, you know, in the past couple of quarters is that you're increasing the pie of value-added products as far as the revenue mix is concerned. Uh, now, going forward, you know, how do you see or how do you envisage the revenue mix to be like? And, uh, you know, you did give us a guidance as far as volumes are concerned. Uh, could you also leave us with a guidance, you know, as far as the FI25 revenue margins as well as bottom line is concerned? See, margins, uh, predicting margins are difficult because there are many variables as well as the, because of the global events happening. And the uh, I can only talk about the growth in the volumes and our volume growth would happen almost 8 to 10% in the coming year. And as far as the value-added products are concerned, we are in the range of, depending upon quarter to quarter, we are in the range of 35 to 40%. And once our mass ABS is, uh, is online and then we would be doing compounds of mass ABS, that would add further to our uh, uh, value-added products. Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Nayar, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us thank all those you. details. Considering the global macros, uh, as you said, it's difficult to look at margins because we keep seeing spikes in uh, every other commodity, every other time. But thank you so much for joining us. We'll slip into a short break now. When we come back, we'll get you more on the markets and stock-specific action. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back to Midcap Radar. You know, one certain pocket of the market today that's seeing quite a bit of a sell-off is actually the cement pack. Uh, Dalmia Bharat came out with its numbers yesterday, a miss as far as the core EBITDA was concerned, and also the commentary in the conference call regarding pricing was something that was quite weak. So if you look at Dalmia Bharat, Dalmia Bharat has seen quite a bit of a sell-off uh, today, and along with that, few of the other South-based cement companies, names like India Cement, Ramco Cement, have also seen quite a bit of selling pressure in today's trading. Uh, now, moving on, RBI has wrapped Kotak Mahindra Bank for inadequacies as far as its IT infrastructure is concerned that has led to frequent outages by asking it to stop onboarding customers via online and mobile banking and from issuing fresh credit cards. Sources close to RBI say that the regulator wants financial entities to put greater importance on risk management and compliance to regulatory guidelines. Ritu Singh joins us with now with what she's picking up. Well, Vivek, you know, this series of actions against various financial entities leading many to question, uh, you know, if, if a business restriction is the best way to go about dealing with non-compliance and what the bigger picture really is. So we spoke to sources that are close to Reserve Bank of India to understand the messaging. And it is clear, if you look at the various actions that have been taken of late, the focus has been on select areas, risk management and assurance, compliance of regulatory guidelines, fairness to customers, board effectiveness and governance. And the RBI is very keen to enforce these as priority focus areas for all the regulated entities. That is the first message coming in. Secondly, we understand in these cases there is a minimum period of one year of bilateral uh, engagements and discussions on deficiencies with more than adequate time given for these entities to respond before any action is taken. So there is no moment of surprise for any entity involved. Third, the business restrictions, which may end up impacting customers as well, are only taken as a last resort of sorts to protect customer interest when these engagements, warnings or fines are not heeded to. Fourth, on the question of why the action is only against select entities, when many other banks or NBFCs in the market may also be at fault or be non-compliant at some level, and we understand that the action is targeted on entities, keeping in mind when the non-compliance is persistent in nature and where the impact on the system could be proportionately higher. And so RBI's actions are intended to have what they call a demonstrative effect on the ecosystem. Lastly, if you've noticed, RBI has been giving a very detailed explanation for the actions taken in its public releases, which is most unlike earlier incidents where barely a line or two were dedicated to the reason for regulatory action. And this, we understand, is based on feedback from stakeholders to send a message to others as well to take notice of these issues and fix their house, if not in order, else face the consequences. Thank you so much, Ritu, for bringing us all of those important details on this very, very important story. But that's all the time we have on this edition of Mid Cap Radar, Mutual Fund Corner, when we return.